Hey everyone, welcome to Gadgets with German. I'm Mark and today we have a really cool device you can see it in front of me. It's the new Amazon Echo Spot. Goes on sale tomorrow. It's a, it's a gadget I've been looking forward to for some time. I want to deep dive into it, tell you everything there is to know about it. Uh, but first, my takeaway, let me just go really simply with this. I think it's one of the top gadgets of the year and it is one of the best alarm clocks you could probably buy right now. It's the alarm clock of the future for your nightstand. This is a device you're going to want on your nightstand, by your bed, or on your dresser. It's something you're going to want in your room because of the smaller screen and all the alarm clock functionality. So let's dive right in. Let's take a look at the Echo Spot. Let's zoom into it and we will dive into all the features. So first things first, it has all the features of the Echo Show, but on this smaller screen. If you didn't see our Echo Show review from a few months ago, take a look at that, uh, and you can be familiar with the new concept of Echoes with screens. So first things first, let's, let's do a demo. Uh, Alexa, how many assists did LeBron James have last night? On Sunday, December 17th, LeBron James had 15 assists for the Cavaliers in 41 minutes in their win against the Washington Wizards. This season, LeBron James has 289 assists, averaging 9.3 assists per game. So I have the NBA skill set up through the Alexa app on my iPhone, and that's, and they caught me saying Alexa there, um, and that's how it knew the, the stats about LeBron James from last night. Uh, let me do another one. Alexa, when is the next Lakers game? Alexa, when is the next Lakers game? The Lakers will play tonight at 7.30 p.m. at home against the Warriors. And so with the screen, you're able to get a little bit more information, like the exact time, the date, uh, that it's an NBA game, the logos of the teams, and also the records of the Lakers. I'm not sure why it's not showing the Warriors record, uh, but that's that. Now, also, if you play music, you can get more information there, too, including lyrics. So let me play a song. Alexa, play Walk on Water by Eminem. Alexa, play Walk on Water by Eminem. I can't find Walk on Water by Eminem. Uh, let's play another song. Alexa, play some new music. Alexa, play some of the latest music. The playlist. Brand new music from Amazon Music. Hello. So you see it's playing music there. And let's go to another song. So you have touch controls. So here's a new Eminem song. And with the touch controls, you're able to get the shuffle, the play pause, repeat songs, going through songs. And also you have the lyrics here, which is unique to the Echo Show uh, and the Echo Spot. Now, some other interface things I wanted to show. You can scroll down from the top. You have the pull-down menu. And in this menu here, it's sort of like a notification center of sort where you can see you're now playing. If you have music playing, you can adjust the brightness. You have your Do Not Disturb toggle, which means if you get an alert or a call, you click the Do Not Disturb before that, and it won't route those calls through. It won't ring. You also have the settings gear here and the home button right there to go back to the home screen. Uh, which is the clock. Now we'll get more into the clocks in a minute, but another demo I wanted to show is that this thing has a camera here. So there's a few things you can do with the camera. Uh, first things first is you can make Alexa video calls. So I want to do a test here, and I alerted Alexa again. So which let's... phone number, contact, or device do you want to call? So Alexa, call Donnie video call. Well, let's do that again. I messed that up. Uh, so... Alexa, video call Donnie. Calling Donnie. So Donnie works at Amazon, and he's the only other person I know with an Echo Spot. So I just want to do a quick video call here. Hey, Donnie, how's it going? Good. How you doing today, Mark? Good. Uh, thanks for coming on. So you can see this is a video call. You want to wave so people can see the video moving? Cool. It's me. You see the little you know, circle right there. And you can click that to get a bigger preview of yourself. OK, so that's Alexa video calling on the Echo Spot. Thanks so much, Donnie. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Mark. Thanks. And you can end the call here by clicking there. It tells you the person's name and how long it was. Uh, and this works between Echo Spot to Echo Spot, also to the Echo Show. And you can also call the Alexa app on Android or on your iPhone or other platforms that support it. 
and you're able to make video calls and audio calls if you want to call between an Echo Spa, an Echo Dot, an Echo Plus, all the other Echoes, they all talk to each other. So I think it makes a really good intercom system as well from your nightstand. Imagine multiple people or family members having Echo Spots in their nightstands, being able to communicate, putting these things in different rooms by your front door. I feel like there's a lot of use cases uh, for this as well. Now there's a few disappointments I do have with this. There's still that ongoing fight, if you've read our stories, between Amazon and Google. So I think this would be a perfect place to watch maybe NBA highlights at night if you miss a game. When you're in bed, you get home late, you want to watch some highlights. If you want to play a YouTube video, I'll give you an example. Uh, Alexa, play some highlights on YouTube of Kobe Bryant. Alexa, play YouTube videos of Kobe Bryant. Web videos are not currently supported on this device. So if you try to play a web video from YouTube or whatnot, it won't play as of yet because there are, they are still working out their issues uh, with Google. So hopefully that gets resolved in the near future. That is a little drawback, but you can watch other video on it. So for example, Alexa, play the trailer for Wonder Woman. So you can see the video in there. What if I promise to be careful? And you can fill the screen too. You can see that filled there. Now this is an under three inch screen. I believe it's a two and a half inch screen. So this is not something you're going to want to watch a lot of video on or movies on or anything like that. But I think for quick glances, maybe a two to three minute video like a movie trailer or YouTube highlights like I said, or sports highlights, anything like that, and video calling, it, it does make good for you because it is pretty close to you if it is on your nightstand if you're watching uh, from your nightstand. Now, there is another thing, and this is personally for me, and I know some of the people here who watch this show listen to Apple Music. There is no Apple Music skill as of yet, but there are skills for Spotify, Pandora, that you control with your voice, and obviously Amazon Prime Music is integrated really well. Something that was actually a very positive surprise to me when I was setting this up last week is that there is a special package if you want to get Amazon Prime Music specifically for the Echoes. So it's $3.99, $4 a month if you want music streaming just the Echo devices. And I think for 4 bucks a month, being able to get your music on here uh, is it is a pretty good offer compared to I believe it's ten dollars a month if you want it for all your platforms including your computer and your phone uh, and your TV sets now there's another thing that you can do with this you can do to do's and notes you can set up lists and stuff like that in addition to your alarms and timers now you can say to the device to to leave a note but in order to access them you have to recontrol it with your voice or you can do it through the Alexa app I wish the interface on here would have sort of an apps paradigm too where you can jump in a few few applications just like and let's switch the other camera here you can go between the home menu do not disturb and settings I wish there was a toggle and let's go to the, the other camera here I wish there was a toggle for being able to go into your lists and notes to be able to access them without needing your voice because there are some cases where you don't want to have to ask your voice to check out a list or a timer or whatnot you want to just do it uh, through touch another thing I noticed during setup is that you need to use the device itself to set it up so if you have a really long password it might be cumbersome typing it in with the touch screen on here but if you're a regular uh, you know password user and you have a short password or whatnot you can pretty much easily set this up within a couple minutes it took me under five minutes to set this up after uh, getting the password and you put in your information your Wi-Fi information all of that and it works uh, really well from setting it up in terms of video calls and phone calls I really like making phone calls uh, from my nightstand not video calls but regular phone calls through my phone so when you set up the Alexa phone calling you put your phone number through the Alexa app it authenticates with your phone and when you call someone else's landline or mobile phone number their cell phone it actually comes in through your cell phone in terms of receiving calls if you have it connected to your iPhone or Android phone or mobile phone you can't do that as of yet but they do have I believe it's a $35 $40 gadget called the Echo Connect that can connect to your landline phone so if you get a landline call and to be honest who has landlines at these days I don't have one here but if you do have one you can plug it in and you can receive and make calls through your landline number I wish there was a way to get more notifications from your phone 
but this thing is really meant to be an alarm clock and we'll dive into that in a minute. But first, I want to dive into asking me anything about it. So we have lots of questions coming in here about the Echo Spot. Please keep sending them in and we have a bunch coming in through so far and let's answer some of these. Uh, Apple Fan asks, when is this available in the US and the UK? So it comes out in the US tomorrow, December 19th. More countries coming down the road. Uh, Mario asks, not sure why it seems like you have to ask Amazon Echo twice just to get a response. Yeah, that's a good point, Mario. I'm not sure why that was happening. It hasn't happened until now. Maybe it's the internet connection back here. But to be honest, in my day-to-day -day usage, I've had zero problems with it. Even this morning, I had no problems with getting uh, the device to understand me or hear me. So I think that's a one-off issue, and we'll keep tracking that. Uh, Becky asks, why would I want this if I have an iPad? I can do this with that. You know, that's a very good question. And the point of the Alexa device uh, is that you get the Alexa service. You get the skills. Siri and some of the other voice services, Google Assistant, are a little bit more limited compared to what they can do with their voice. For example, you can order an Uber, a Lyft, all sorts of stuff with your voice from here. It's very convenient. If you're getting ready, control everything with your voice. Whereas Siri on the iPad, it has that functionality, but it's not as in-depth as the Alexa skill set. Another question coming in here, is Alexa spying on you? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I, I don't think so. I have no reason to believe Alexa spying on you. It records what you're saying, but it doesn't start sending your voice and what you're asking to Amazon servers until you say the wake word. And you can choose between saying Alexa, Echo, computer, and after that, it starts recording it. And you can actually go into the Alexa app on your phone or on the Alexa website on your computer to be able to delete manually or different time spans of phrases and things you've said to Alexa. So you're able to easily remove it. And we'll get into some of the more privacy concerns in our privacy segment uh, later on. Now, I want to dive into our deep dive because this is really exciting and I want to go into what this Echo Spot is all about. So let's switch to the other camera and I will take you through uh, the Echo Spot. So this is an awesome digital alarm clock. This is an alarm clock from the future. I don't really see any competition on the market for a smart alarm clock like this. So I just want to dive in with what you would do in a normal day. So uh, Alexa, Set up an alarm clock with the song Walk on Water. Alarm for what time? 10 a.m. Alarm set for 10 a.m. to walk on water on Amazon Music. So at 10 a.m., you will be able to hear the song Walk on Water to wake you up. And that's a new feature they added recently. So it's a pretty cool uh, piece of functionality there to be able to get an alarm clock with the song. And you can see it has a little tab on the bottom here uh, to show you when your alarm is set. And you can set alarms for different days. So you can ask for a weekend alarm or a weekday alarm. So Alexa, set a weekday alarm for 6.30 a.m. Second alarm set for every weekday at 6.30 a.m. And then a weekend alarm. Alexa, set a weekend alarm for 9.30 a.m. Third alarm set for every weekend at 9.30 a.m. So I have my weekend alarm, my Monday alarm, and my weekday alarms. And you can toggle through these. You can cancel these. You can ask it to remove all your alarms. So Alexa, delete all of my alarms. Canceling all your alarms. And when your alarm rings, you can tell the device and you can say, you know, the wake word, which I'm not going to say because I don't want it to go off right now. And you can ask it to turn off the alarm. So you don't even have to get out of bed to turn it off. For some people, that might not be a great feature because it might be a way to get yourself out of bed if you put it on your nightstand or on your dresser instead of your nightstand. But I think it's a cool piece of functionality. Now, something else very interesting, and let's go back here to the device, are the different clock faces. So there are tons of them. There are 16 uh, clock faces. So if you swipe down from the top, you go to settings and you go to home and clock, you can go to themes here, and then you can choose between three different types of clock faces, analog, digital, and personal photo. So a lot of people are really fascinated with what the clock faces look like, so I'm gonna walk through all of them. So on the analog side, you have this one, it's called bold teal, and it has a blue, green background here. You have a pink one. This one right here, it sort of shows where the moon is there. It's called copper. Then you have another one, it shows uh, the clouds right there too. It's called blues. And then you have a record player one, which is actually really cool. It looks like a record player, like a piece of vinyl back there. And then you have the red uh, secondhand and the white uh, other timers here. And then you have this, you know, old school looking one. It looks like a regular old school clock face. They call it textured. You have the gray and the black around it and uh, the red on the second hand. You have a little uh, date indicator right there. So it's very cool. And if you want to set one, you click the check box on top. Uh, now I want to dive into the other one. So let's go back to themes, go to digital. And you have street lights here. This is the default digital one. 
Then you have the bokeh effect, which is sort of like if you take a picture, you have the, the, the blur in the background. It's sort of a photo effect. Canon, which is the one I used. Uh, you have mountains back there. It's basically the canyons. You have water in the background. Uh, beach grass, sort of a, a grassy knoll type of look. And then you have flamingo. And then you have peacock, another cool one. I'm going to set that one. And the last one you're able to do is personal photo. So you can choose a little background here and different looks here. So you can set this one. And then you're able to choose if you want an app to use a photo from the Alexa app or Prime Photos. So if you have photo stored in your Prime Photos account, you'd be able to choose through here. Or you can go through the picture picker on the Alexa app in the Amazon application uh, on your iPhone or Android. And I don't have photos on here, so it's asking me to add a photo to be able to, to add it. Now, I think the clock faces are really cool, and there's some other preferences. You can choose to rotate continuously through different notifications, upcoming events, uh, trending topics. So let's go back to the home screen here, and I can show you. Uh, so you can swipe through it to see different things. So you do one swipe. Uh, that way and you get the clock on top you get the weather it's sunny out and tells us that we're in San Francisco it's a little bit chilly out right now uh, I wish you could tap the, the the weather to be able to get more information about the weather but if you ask it Alexa what's the weather Alexa what's the weather currently in San Francisco it's 47 degrees with mostly sunny skies today you can expect lots of sun with a high of 61 degrees and a low of 45 degrees. So you get more information there. Uh, so overall, I mean, you get the information you need. If you have calendar appointments in your account here, you can get that. You get a little stream of different things you might want to try when using Alexa on the Echo Spot. But there is a downside that I wanted to, to note. So let's go back to the home screen here. And for some people, I feel like the clock faces, the, the, the actual numbers might be too small. So if you have it on your nightstand very close to you, you can probably easily see the time. But if your eyes aren't great or you have it on your dresser, you might have a really hard time seeing the numbers. So I wish there was a setting or a way that you can use a gesture to increase the size of the numbers. There is an accessibility setting to be able to double tap with your fingers or triple tap with your fingers, sort of like on an iPhone, in order to zoom in more so across the entire OS. But I wish there was a simple text size setting like you have on an iPhone to be able to increase the system-wide text. It would be nice if you can fill out the screen. But of course, you can ask the device itself uh, what the time is. Now, a lot of people in my testing have been asking, what about at nighttime? You don't want the, the very bright screen uh, to go off and make it be able so you won't be able to sleep. So there is a night mode, which I use, which is really cool. So if you go into the display settings, you have adaptive brightness. That's one element to it, so it adjusts to the environment around you. So if it's darker, obviously the screen will lighten up a little bit. But if you go into home and clock, you do have a night mode where you can turn on the night mode manually or you can have it scheduled. So from 9 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. daily, the screen will be completely dim and it will be basically like if the brightness is off all the way. So you can hardly see it there. Um, and that's night mode. So that is a cool thing that they thought about uh, when including it. Now, another thing I will note is on the circular display, a few things do get cut off a little bit. So you can see like some words getting cut off on the edges a little bit when you're scrolling up and down. I don't think this is going to be an issue for most people, but you will have to try your Alexa skills to see if there's any Alexa skills that are not optimized for the round screen yet. You might get a little cut off. I haven't seen many instances of this. I don't think it's an issue, uh, but that is something to be aware of. Now, when we're talking about voice devices, a device with a camera and a microphone that you're going to have in your bedroom or in your home even, the privacy implications are very important. So in this segment, our privacy check element, I want to talk about how you can keep yourself private and safe with devices uh, like the Echo. So something really important to note is that on the top of the device, you have a kill all mic and camera button here. So you click this button and it goes red. And you can see the red circle around it. And this means the device won't be able to hear me. So I can say, Alexa doesn't hear me and it kills the camera as well and you see the red indicator light on there that's always on when it's going through this and if you have the device like this you see you can see the red ring around that the camera might not catch catch it well but it is definitely there and it is visible the same thing on the Echo Show now all data goes to the cloud recordings are stored on Amazon servers but you can delete the data individually or from certain time span and you can search for specific things you said in the Alexa app or on the Amazon website on your computer so whatever you say you can delete it yourself but again you have to ask yourself do you trust such a device in your bedroom 
Personally, I do trust the, the, the button on top to be able to kill all mics and cameras. I don't think Amazon is doing nef anything nefarious with people's data. Obviously, this is a concern. It's something being talked about uh, pretty rapidly, but I personally don't see any reason to be concerned. The companies, you know, they, they live their existence on users trusting them and see I have, I have no reason not to trust Amazon uh, in this case. Now, there is another thing where you can disable the camera only. So the camera functionality is used for two things. You can tell the device, hey, take a picture of me, and you can sort of take a photo booth-esque picture. You have some filters there. You can try that out on your Echo Spot if you get one, but it's also used for the video calls. So there might be some people who want to just turn off the camera completely, uh, not kill the microphone and the camera. So the top button kills both altogether. You can do nothing on the camera and mic side. I'm going to turn the mic back on, and I want to show you that you can disable the camera only. So let's go back into the settings menu on the other camera here. Uh, go into settings, and you have all sorts of different settings here, device options. You have your different wake word, and then there's a setting here for turning off the camera. So you can actually physically block the camera by clicking this toggle. And you get a little toggle menu right here. It tells you disabling the camera restricts access to select features, including taking photos, making and receiving video calls, or video drop-ins. You still be able to make and receive voice calls. So I think this is a function that a lot of people might want to use just disabling the camera altogether and not have to worry about it. So you basically get the screen plus the microphones, everything you would get in a normal Echo in addition to the display, uh, but no cameras to worry about. There is another feature called drop-in, and we discussed this with the Echo Show, where you are able to actually choose to allow certain people to just start a video conference at, with you without you accepting it. And there is an option in here in order to disable that. Personally, I would have that off at all times. I don't really you know, trust people enough to be able to give the specific people, albeit, a uh, choice to be able to access video conferencing on my device, especially if it's one in the home or the bedroom. I think it makes a lot of sense if you have one in your office, in your desk, if you want to communicate uh, between teammates or something like that. But for a device that I think is really geared toward the nightstand, I'm not going to want to have that on. Now, we have a bunch of other questions coming in here. Uh, Matt DeWitt asks, uh, this looks great. Can you do more than one alarm? Yes. So as I showed, you're able to do multiple alarms. So I want to just show that again for those just joining us. Alexa, set a weekday alarm for 8 a.m. Alarm set for every weekday at 8 a.m. Alexa, set a weekend alarm for 11 a.m. Second alarm set for every weekend at 11 a.m. And when I was trying this, I did upwards of five or six different alarms. So there have been no issues with adding multiple alarms. Uh, another question, does it dim down during the night? I hate bright lights at night. Uh, yes, so for those just joining us, there is a night mode. So it can kill the brightness all the way to the minimum when it's at night. will only light up during certain hours. And you can toggle that in the settings menu. Another question coming in here, uh, Jeffy is asking, my Alexa response time has gotten way longer. You know, that has to do with the internet connection, how far you are away from the microphones. Personally, I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. I think it triggered the, the wake word there. Um, I'm going to kill the mics for now. Um, I think it has to do with the internet connection and how far you are away from the microphones. Another question coming in here from Matt DeWitt, are the mics as good as the other devices? So you have four microphones on top here. And let's go to the other camera. We can sort of show that. You can see the four microphones on there uh, around the volume buttons and the, the button to toggle off and on the camera and microphones. Some of the other Alexa devices have upwards of six, but for this one, for the small size, the distance you're normally going to keep this at at your nightstand to your bed, I have not had a problem with the microphones uh, whatsoever. So I think it's a good amount for what you're getting here. Really an alarm clock uh, from the future, uh, I would say. Now, something important to note is how much do these things cost, right? So this goes on sale December 19th from the Amazon website, and it costs $130 versus $100 for the regular Echo. The difference is, is that this one has the screen and the camera, whereas the regular Echo, it goes much louder. You get stereo sound. This one, the sound is pretty good. If you're getting ready in the morning, you want to play some music, it can fill up your room. It can fill up a small bedroom. It fills up, you know half of an apartment, I would say. But you're not going to get bass. You're not going to get stereo sound. You're going to get mono sound. But it also focuses just on loudness. You're not going to get like the highs and lows, the mid-ranges of a song like you might get with an Echo Show or a regular Echo. And it's basically the compromise you have to make. Do you want to focus on sound quality and Alexa, or do you want to get the nightstand functionality? Personally, I think for $30 more, the nightstand functionality is really compelling to me. Now, I mentioned that you're also going to want Amazon Music if you don't already have another Alexa music service on here and you're able to get for $4 a month the Amazon Music Streaming Service just to your Echo. So I do think that is a pretty good deal and it goes together well. There is also Bluetooth support on here. So if you have Apple Music, and let's switch the other camera so I can show you, Apple Music or another music service that's not supported, you can go into the settings menu 
And let's switch the other camera here. And you can go to Bluetooth and you can connect the device. Uh, and you can see all the devices in the area here. You can connect it to it. You can stream music just like you would connect a Bluetooth a car or something like that to a speaker or another uh, device there. Now, another thing to know is if you do want home integration, so you want a home hub, whereas the Echo Plus, which is $150, has a built-in home hub. It's sort of a, a smart things or a little device that you would have in your home in order to connect the lights and the different smart home devices to the device itself. With this one, you need to get a separate home hub because it doesn't have one built in. It's very rare to see some built in. The Echo Plus is the only Amazon device that has it built in. Hopefully they add home hubs to all their devices down the road. I feel like at this point with the proliferation of home devices, lights, locks, garage doors, uh, blinds, and kitchen appliances getting home support, I think it is a no-brainer for them to add it eventually. So that's going to be an extra between $25 and $100 cost uh, by the time you add everything up together. Now I'm sure you have more questions about the Echo Spot. Uh, so feel free to send those in to me on Twitter at, at Mark Gurman or on Facebook at facebook.com slash gadgets with Gurman. Please subscribe and like us on Facebook and follow me on Twitter so you always know when our next episode is. Thank you so much for watching. And again, if you have any other questions, send them in. I will answer either online on Facebook or Twitter or on our next show. And we'll see you after the new year uh, and after Christmas in January for a bunch of great episodes and live streams and interviews we have lined up for CES in Las Vegas uh, between January 8th and January 11th. So thanks for joining and have a great day.